raining outside. Been raining for three, four days here. Carrying right along. I'll show you something. In, in order to get to, in order to get us uh, our parts all together and uh, uh, run a price on this project, uh, let's start putting some stuff together. But I'm going to take it apart for painting. So, like right here, I'm not going to put no grease right there, but uh, this would go right here, and this thing right here would go in there. That's a little spring and a plunger. You know, if, you, if you're taking notes, and it was, it was worn on in there. It had a little end in on it there, and it was hard to get out of that little thing, there, and I done took the grinder to it. Uh, it works a lot better now. But that goes on there like that. And and this cam right here, I'd like to have a better cam, but you know, it's the best one I got. But uh, this is up here, this eccentric strap. That's what they call them in a the book. It, it's, uh, it's worn entirely too much. Uh, oh yeah, it's just way too much. So this one, it, you know, it has some wire, but it's, uh, it's much better, so I'm going to I'm I'm going to use this one, uh, and this is that. Uh, you'll find some of these that's got a round thing right there, and some of them got that hex. You know, it's made out of hex material. Got a lock nut on it right there. That's three eighths fine thread. But what you do is put all that together like that. Them three pieces. The big spring goes on the back. And then a washer. I've got a thick one right there. And then goes through this hole right there in the bottom mat. That washer goes on there. Actually, it's a spacer. And then this spring goes on here. And then this thing right here at uh, that's a alignment nut. I would think what you would call that. And you put all that together. And when 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 uh, I'm I'm looking at it up here so I can see it, but when, when it's on here, you assemble all this right here and put that up on there. Now, and you put your you put your cotter in there. Don't forget that cotter. Okay, now that now this this part right here basically. Uh, there is a little, well, there ain't much adjustment you can do on it right here. Just a few threads all. You can tighten it up. But from the factory, you know, that was kind of the setting. And, and the way you adjusted it was, was to turn the whole amount in or out. You, you know what I mean? This way. And the spring tension with a big spring and a little spring was supposed to be the correct tension to uh, un unlatch. That was supposed to be how much you needed to unlatch. That uh, I'm gonna put that spring and little catch thing back in there and put back up there and then it gets one of these things. Let me let me let me get these down here. I'll show it to you. A little little flat washer. It's, it's got a little thing bent over on the edge of it and it catches in that hole on the back side right down there. And then you got a spring goes up there and then you got this big old skinny washer goes up there like that and then you got the cotter that goes in here and what you do is you push that up on there like that and put that cotter in there okay now that's all assembled and like I say I'm going to take it back apart to paint it but oh yeah see it works real good and that's that's a that retards your spark. If you run your engine, if you if you run the corn shell or something, I'll take some. I seen it this summer up yonder at uh, that's up there at Adams, gentleman up there running his engine, and he had it on this year. He had it on start. That retards it too much. Your engine will heat up really bad. Uh, it's, it has to be done there on run. Uh, look it up in the book. And then, and then what holds all this apparatus on there is this is this little uh, it's got two marks on it right there that lines up on your 
might need it if you was ever need it. I think I think they call them stove bolts right there, and they got a little lock washer on the back of it. But that'll go in there like that. And like I say, we, we'll make adjustment right here on this on this whole on this whole mechanism as to when we want it to trip that EK mag. We, we'll do that later. But but this this come on the engine right there. Actually, uh, I put a better one of these on there, but the original one would have ran on it, so I'm not going to add any cost on it there, like. How much it costs to get going. But uh, there is going to be some cost in this thing. This side cover right here. And this this cam shaft. The, the, the tolerance on it was, like I say, the best I have ever seen. Uh, it was no wire on the shaft. And you, it was like less than half of a thousandth wire on it. And the... Uh, housing itself here had no wire on it either like it come from the factory so the, and the one it was on here was worn out to a condition that you could have run the engine but it would have been real noisy and when you run a loose bushing like that it just telescopes the wire over the whole complete engine you know what I mean it puts everything in a bind and stuff starts wiring uneven it's not good so it would have had to been repaired to run the fish at the engine if you were going to power something with it for sure. So there, there is a, I, I made a trade off from the parts engine for this one in exchange and we've got a figure over there and um, I'll, uh, we'll go over and add that up. But something interesting in one of those other ones I took apart right there, somebody had made one of those indent things, it wasn't in this one. And it's just a flat piece of metal round on the end with a spring backing it up. No hole in it. It worked. And, and, and there'll be some cost on these on this right here. I have to add this. This come off of this engine. And you remember we we drug it out of there with that pipe wrench and and it damaged it beyond use. So I have to add another. I think it was three dollars. This is the pipe that, one, one end of this right here is bent. Now, I'll show you why. See, see, there's a bend in that pipe back that way. When you turn it around, it's not straight. And what what, what, what it was, when you put the mag on there, it give you a little bit of freedom right there so you can get that greaser off of there. But the greasers, we're going to, I'm going to put on here, and, and there is a little cost in this right here, uh, will be these right here, so we just go for... And like I say, I'll probably take these off right here and uh, paint them and then put them back on there. And, and this is get a greaser original type that screws right onto there, no problem. And and then uh, now we'll just put this on here for greaser left hand thread. And also a new oil field pipe up there. And uh, well, the next thing we're going to do, and we'll add it to the cost over there, is a new set of rings. That was an internet purchase right there. And I'm going, I'm going, to, I'm going to add some cost, which is a little less than what the person that bought an engine like this at the auction sale, if they were going to repair it, it would have cost them a little bit more uh, simply because I had an engine that, a parts engine that I could get parts off of and sell, well, probably low internet price, let's say. And, and But to make the engine better, much, much better is the piston bushing the rod, little rod bushing on that wrist pin in there was worn completely out. I mean, it was it, it was beyond use, and I think it might be another video, I'm not sure. But this is a very good, and, 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 and what happened, 
the the rod and the wrist pin is out of the parts engine and the piston which was no good in the parts engine is the piston is it was in this engine so i just put them all together and ended up with a very very good setup here uh, it takes four rings and and and, and i done already pre adjust pre pre put these i'll show you something uh, we're gonna put the rings on it, put it in there, and but I'll show you something about that bearing scraping. Yeah, and and, and like I say, it's I want to keep them exactly right because I won't be adding no shims to that unless something changes when I put it together. But. Yeah, scraped. The um, and the reason being, I show you something. The bearings that was in this engine when I got it, original rod. So I elected to put a very good set out of another engine into it. These could be used. It's just that the flange is broken away. You know, they'd go in there and you could run the engine. But when you look at these bearings, they're Babbitt, and they're die cast. And when they was brand spanking new, they would be slick. They wouldn't be uh, scraped or nothing. Just as out of the mold. But when you use them, when you use them, and, and, and I think in that other video I said them little specs was from the crankshaft. It's not. It's usually uh, all of that contamination in there, 99 nine percent of it more is foreign material it's got in there and you can see where they dug into the bearing them shiny places like a streak across the sky almost it and, and they're embedded little particles in yonder so and, and you can't put this back on the bar on the crankshaft and use it with uh, it would just and and what i did on the crankshaft you know i polished it with one of those crankshaft polishing belts you know by hand they're about 2,000 grit or something you know they're really you can't even tell it's got any grit on it it produces a really really slick shiny round surface so and if you put this on there it would surely instantly scrape embed into the crankshaft or make a place on it not embed into it because this is the softer of the two but but what but uh, but I'm not going to scrape one right now, but for sake of why I do it, and I'm not I'm not suggesting anyone out there do that, do this. It works for me, and it has for a lot of engines. But if you take that little blade and you just break away this glaze on there, that's harder than a rock. You know, it's really hard. If you can just get right underneath that glaze right there with some kind of rhythm. You, you you can take off about a half thousand. You, you know what I mean. You you're not taking off. Uh, you know what I mean. You're not carving a new bearing. You you're just removing this color. When you get that removed, you've got new soft babbit. And when you put it back on the bearing, one of the things not to do on these is never would I advise anyone to use sandpaper on these because the sandpaper particles gets embedded in this babbit and you'll ruin your crankshaft then you will ruin it with sandpaper particles in here and but and that's the reasoning behind it and and and, and you know you, you can measure it. You, you, you can put you some you, uh, Prussian blue on there. You know, you can blue it all up, and you can do that right there, and you can do it again, and you can fit it on here and all like that. But when it's, when it's all said and done, if you just take the same amount all the way around yet, or you put that on right there, you, you will. I have never suffered any uh, problems with it.